We're here today at St. Cat's for Ending Period Prejudice, a poetry slam and panel discussion about ending the stigma attached to menstruation as part of a week-long series of events held by Oxford Dignity Drive. I'm Rachel um, and I'm a co-organiser with Neve and uh, we're both at Wadham. Yeah, well, Rachel's kind of done right. Yeah, hi, I'm Neve, also co-organiser. Hi, so um, can you tell me a bit about the Oxford Dignity Drive? Um, so Neve and I have been quite involved with the um, Freer Period Scheme that our are doing at the moment and uh, both of us discussed that we thought that it would be really great if we could work out a way to provide um, sanitary products at cost price or lower um, to shelters and yeah. for homeless people in the local area. And obviously because it's never been done before we thought it might be possible to get some money from um, Oxford Colleges and we've also got GoFundMe and what we're doing at the moment is liaising with Aosu and with various charities in Oxford to see where they need the provisions and where we can possibly get the donations to. Sure and what about the events going on this week? Um, so we thought that it was important to have a kind of programme of events to um, raise awareness about the issue because it's something people might not necessarily have thought of in relation to homelessness um, and also because kind of a, the root maybe of the problem um, in providing sanitary products to homeless people is because there is still um, a lot of cultural like taboo and stigma yeah. around menstruation so we're kind of like combining um, combining trying to like sort of start conversations and break stigma um, with like educating and raising awareness of the issue. The premenstrual tension should have warned her, but our cadet doesn't know the red alert. Instead, they group outside for morning meal with all the other boys. They stand along like toys on a factory line, nanometer accurate, and like them, her outer self is squeaky, creaky, clean, but in her not so hollow torso. Her hormones take their own formation, poised for forward march. They hit her pelvic arch and set it cramping. Some of the statistics for Oxford are quite uh, bad about kind of the, the situation for homeless people in Oxford now. So can you tell me a bit about that? Um, so although the statistics are quite unreflective, um, we found that largely the number of women that are on the streets are only about 10% of homeless people okay. are women. Um, but what had, tends to happen is that you get uh, vulnerably housed or hidden homeless people that tend to be menstruating people. Yeah. And so we're really keen to contact shelters and to reach out to areas that help vulnerably housed people that might be in need of these um, but also that we don't look to just um, only shelters we try to look as far and wide as possible to people that we might not have come up on our radar otherwise if they were in shelters um, and also yeah it was another thing we want we kind of wanted to use the campaign to draw attention to was that Oxford does have a huge homeless problem um, in general so it's um, oh, sort of easy to forget about sometimes when you're like wandering around your college but um, and there's been a dramatic increase in homelessness since 2013 in line with cuts to um, services and often those cuts have fallen on um, women because they're often, services are often quite gender neutral anyway and they don't have funding and they can't kind of um, adapt to needs like menstruation and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, we want to also highlight that in, in Dignity Drive. Now, where you guys are? If you want to shift for a second, I'd like you to move again. How confident are you talking about period with other people? This time, we're going to have that end over there be everyone. In the middle be close friends and family. Here's maybe just a partner. And there is, I keep it to myself, in personal and professional context. So way over there, everyone, the universe, space, the ISS, over here. And how do you think the response has been um, in Oxford? Yeah, um, I think we've been um, really, really like um, pleased with the response we've got so far. 
Um, we've raised nearly £400 on our crowdfunder um, and then we've had motions passed in, was it like 10 or so least, colleges? Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's clearly, I think what we found when we were starting to kind of organise it um, is that this is an issue that actually lots of people in Oxford were kind of starting to think about and it was yeah. just about kind of like bringing that together. So yeah, I think we've been really pleased yeah, with um, the response we've got so far. What's the future for the Dignity Drive? What's going on after this week? Um, so after this week we'll be going around colleges to collect the physical donations that Aye. we've had um, and we'll be looking to liaise with our zoo to actually buy the products and to work out whether it's better to buy moon cups or to buy a higher portion of tampons because obviously we don't want to go into shelters and thrust upon them what we think is the best kind Aye. of provision. We want to like provide what they'd need. Yeah. Um, and then because we've had such an overwhelming support from colleges we're going to look into providing for not just the Oxford area but maybe like branching out into Oxfordshire um, and seeing how we can replicate our campaign in other universities possibly and yeah. whether interested people might be able to replicate it in their place of work or their communities or anything like that.